Hello and welcome back to the channel. Now, if you've been following my videos, you can see that I've been building a lot of virtual machines. So far, I've probably built over six Windows Server virtual machines and about maybe two Windows 10 VMs. Now, if you have a high performance PC with a lot of RAM, a lot of storage, and a CPU with lots of cores, then these VMs probably take up about 20% or less of your system resources. But if you're doing this on a laptop with limited resources, or you have a family PC that you're using, you're probably struggling to build all of these different systems and also run them all at once. You could try to upgrade the components in your PC, but modern laptops these days don't allow for RAM or storage upgrades, or maybe your PC is a pre-built computer with no rooms for upgrade. So what you can do is use another PC as a server to build and store your virtual machines. And this PC doesn't need to be anything expensive or brand new. If you have an old PC laying around, you can use that. Sometimes I will buy used PCs, typically business class desktop like Lenovo or Dell mini PCs. They don't cost a lot. And even if their CPUs are a few generations old, that's okay because this is a test lab and your goal here is to learn. As long as the hardware is compatible with the software and you can build your virtual machines, that's really all you need. A PC with 16 gig of RAM, 500 gig hard drive and a four core processor with a network adapter, that is more than enough to get you started. With that being said, in this video, I do have a mini PC with decent specs. It has an eight core AMD processor. It has two terabytes of RAM and it has a 64 gigabyte of storage and a network adapter. So I will be using this PC to build and store all of my virtual machines. So in my past videos, we were using VMware Workstation, which is known as a type two hypervisor, meaning you have the hardware layer, then on top of that, you have your operating systems like Windows 11 or Mac OS. Then you have your software like VirtualBox or VMware Workstation. Then you install your virtual machines on top of that software. Another type of hypervisor is known as a type one hypervisor, where you have the hardware layer, then you have the hypervisor that is your operating system that goes on top of your hardware layer, and then you build your virtual machines on that hypervisor. So the performance is usually better on the type one hypervisor because there is more of a direct access to your hardware. So in this video, we will be installing a type one hypervisor called Proxmox. It's free and it works great. So let's dive in. All right, so to start, I will download the Proxmox ISO image. So in Google, I will type Proxmox download, and then I will click on the first link and that will bring me to the Proxmox website. And from here, I will download the latest release, which is Proxmox VE 9.1 ISO installer. And while that download is going, notice we have two other products from Proxmox. We have the Proxmox backup server, which is used to backup virtual machines, containers, and other objects. And then there is the Proxmox mail gateway that is used for mail security and filtering. It basically sits in front of your mail server to protect you from spam and other threats. And once a download is done, now I will download another software called Rufus, and we will use Rufus to write our ISO file to a USB. And once a download is done, I will open up the Rufus software. And once Rufus opens up, I will insert my USB drive and we can see that it has been detected. And then I will select my Proxmox ISO file from my downloads folder. And I do get this pop-up window letting me know that the image selected is an ISO hybrid. So the DD image writing mode will be enforced. I will click OK on that. And when I click on start, I will get another pop-up box letting me know that the data on the USB will be wiped. So very important, if the USB you're using has important files, those files will be deleted. And once that is done, I will insert my USB drive inside of the mini PC. And from here, I will power it on. Now, because my hard drive is blank, it will boot straight into the Proxmox installer. But if I had another operating system install, like Windows or something else, then I would have to go into the BIOS and select my USB to boot from it. So you might need access to your BIOS or to your boot menu if you need to manually select your USB drive to boot from. Now, once everything is compatible, we will be brought to the Welcome to the Proxmox Virtualization Environment installer. And from here, I will choose to install Proxmox VE Graphical, which means that we get the GUI experience for the installation. 
And from here, it's going to start loading the necessary installation files for us to install Proxmox. First, we have the end user license agreement that you can read through if you want to know more about what you're agreeing to. But for me, I will just click next. Then it will ask us where we want to install the Proxmox operating system. Now, I only have one device, so that is pre-selected for me. But if I had multiple hard drives, I would have been able to select where I want to install it. I can also click on options to change the file system of the storage device, but I will leave this as exe4 and proceed. For the time zone, I will choose Canada as my country. And for the time zone, I will select America Toronto and then click next. And next, I will need to create a password. And very important, this password is what we will be using to log into Proxmox after the installation, whether we're logging into SSH or through the web portal. So make sure you keep this password safe and you remember what it is. My email will be mail at infotech.ca, which is not the real email, but I will be using that. Then I will click on next. Then we have the network settings where I can modify the network configurations if needed. I will change the host name to be pve1.prblabs.lan, then leave everything else as is and then click on next. And finally, we get to a summary page where we can review all of the configurations that we made. Also notice we have this option checked off to automatically reboot after a successful installation, which I will leave checked off. And once I'm happy with all of my selection, I will click on install. And then we'll wait for the installation to be done. Now, as long as we don't have any hardware issues, the installation should proceed smoothly. I have seen Proxmox installations fail because of hardware incompatibility. So ensure that the hardware you're using is compatible with Proxmox. After a few minutes of waiting, we can see that my installation was successful. And here it tells us what to do next. We need to reboot. And on a web browser, we need to navigate to the IP address https colon forward slash forward slash 10.10.10.38 with the port 8006. So this is where we can access the web portal of Proxmox. And once we've reviewed this information, Proxmox will reboot. Now, once Proxmox is back online, we can see this console screen, which is asking us to log in. The username will be root, which is the default administrative account for Linux-based systems, and the password will be the password that we created during the installation. Now, because Proxmox is based on the Debian operating system, which is a Linux distribution, commands that work on Debian will work on Proxmox. If I try an ifconfig, Okay, that will fail because it is a depreciated command. But if I try IPA, we can see the IP information of Proxmox using that command. Now, there are other commands we can use to administer our Proxmox system. However, for the most optimal experience, it's better to access the web GUI from another computer. And if you're wondering if you're able to just install a GUI application on Proxmox and just use it, there is no official way to do this. And it's not recommended to do it either. It's better to just access the Proxmox web portal from another machine. So that is what I will do. I will head over to my Windows 11 machine. And from here, I will open up a web browser and I will navigate to the Proxmox IP address. Now, just a reminder, if I were to type just 10.10.10.38 and press enter, you will see that this will fail. It will tell us that the site cannot be reached. Because remember, we need to add the port. So at the end of the IP address, I will add a colon, then 8006 and then I will press enter. And there we go. Now we do get this page telling us that our connection is not private. And this is normal when hosting internal systems. Because Proxmox is using a self-signed certificate, our Windows machine does not trust it. But because we know that this is indeed our Proxmox server with the right IP address, it is safe to proceed. So I will click on advanced and then proceed to 10.10.10.38. And this will give us the Proxmox VE login. Now remember the username will be root and the password is the same password that we created during our installation. 
it's the same password that you use to log into the Proxmox console. Now, at first login, we do get this little pop-up box informing us that we have no valid subscription. Now, don't let this scare you. This subscription is just referring to the enterprise subscription that can be used for the support and access to the private repositories. If you're deploying this for business, having an enterprise subscription with support is recommended, but not having a subscription will not prevent us from using Proxmox. So we'll click OK here. Now, once we're in Proxmox, you can see our task at the bottom. And this is where you can view recent actions completed by Proxmox. The left pane is our server view, and the middle pane is where we can configure Proxmox. Under Data Center, this is where you can view your Proxmox servers. We currently only have one, and I can expand this out. We can see our local network, which will give us information about our network configuration for Proxmox. Local is where we can upload our ISO files and container templates that we can use to build our virtual machines and containers. And local VM is where we can store our newly built virtual machines and containers. Now for this video, I won't be building a new machine. I will do that in the next video. But for now, what I want to show you is how to upload an ISO file to Proxmox. So what I will do is I will open a new tab and then I will enter Windows Server 2025 download. And then we'll click on the second link. And then I will download the 64 bit version in the English language. And once that is done, I will head to my downloads folder. And then I will rename the file Windows Server 2025. Now, back in Proxmox, I will click on local. and then ISO images, and here I will upload my ISO file. And once it is done, we do get this output box letting us know that the upload was successful. And we can also see the Windows Server 2025 ISO file here available for us to use. So in Proxmox, when you're building your virtual machines, you do need to upload your ISO files first for it to be available for you to build your virtual machines. Okay, so that's it for this video. Let's just do a recap of what was done here. Okay, so in this video, we didn't really do much. We just installed the Proxmox operating system on a mini PC, and we uploaded a ISO image of Windows Server 2025 to our Proxmox server. Now, although you can use Proxmox to build your Windows Server infrastructure for testing, Proxmox is very popular in the self-hosted space. A lot of people, including myself, use Proxmox to host free and open source software that is alternatives to paid software. For example, if you're tired of paying for streaming services, you can use Jellyfin to centralize all of your media. Nextcloud can be used as a Google Drive or OneDrive replacement. FaultWarden is a really great password manager. Bookstack can be used for your documentation. And really, you can build any Linux server that can be used to host your own personal websites, so like a resume or like a blog site. And you can build all of this on Proxmox for free. And I do have videos planned showing you how to build all of these services. So stay tuned for that. But that is it for this video. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.